Hello out there, YouTube. It's me, Logan Albright, back again with another book review for your viewing pleasure. And I have to apologize to you all. I know I haven't been putting out a lot of videos lately. I'm in the middle of National Novel Writing Month, and I've been so busy writing that I haven't had a lot of time to read books and to review them. So, But I did get through one, and I'm going to talk about it. It's The Sea Priestess by Dion Fortune. Uh, I have talked about Dion Fortune on this channel before. She is a psychologist and occultist from the first half of the 20th century, I think she's a brilliant writer. I think she's a brilliant occultist. She's written many of my favorite books on the subject. Um, I've reviewed one of her novels in the past called The Goatfoot God, and this is my second uh, book that I've read from her. And this is a story about a man who's sort of, you know, dissatisfied with his life. He has to work a boring job and take care of his sister and take care of his mother and doesn't really have any love in his life and is just sort of plodding along, not really getting anywhere. He's sort of uh, sickly and not very healthy. And he encounters this mysterious magical woman called Morgan Le Fay, which is, you know, a reference to the Arthurian legends. Dion Fortune was a big Arthurian legend aficionado and wrote extensively about them. And uh, they kind of become a couple, not, they don't become a romantic couple, but they, can, they form a friendship and they form a partnership and they decide that they want to uh, kind of do these rituals on the sea coast of Britain uh, by this cave and they want to summon the sea priestess and Morgan is going to embody the sea priestess and he's going to be a priest of the sea. And that's sort of what brings them together and they learn from each other and they sort of, the man sort of finds purpose in his life through that. Um, that's basically the outline of the plot. I'll be honest with you, as a work of literary merit, this is less than amazing. It's a fun enough story, and I enjoyed reading it, but I don't think Dion's fortune's primary talents lay in literature. She was much better as a, uh, a psychologist and a cultist, but there's so much good like, information in this book about kind of her philosophy of the world and her philosophy of occultism that I really enjoy reading her novels, because you sometimes get more out of those than you get out of her books on their nonfiction books. And so I like to read them for that uh, purpose. And I have another one of hers that I've bought that I haven't read yet called Moon Magic, and I'm excited to get to that one at some point. Nevertheless, I think there's some good observations in here about the relations between men and women and how we relate to each other. And I think there's some good observations about how to kind of, you know, jumpstart your life and get yourself out of a, a funk that you're in and try to find purpose and meaning in your life and why that's important. I think that's in there. And there's a little bit of wish fulfillment as well. I mean, who hasn't dreamt of encountering a mysterious, dark, magical woman who wants to be a sea priestess? I mean, that's sort of the dream, isn't it, for everybody? So there's a little bit of fun in that as well. I think it's an enjoyable enough story. The themes in this book are interesting, I think. There's a lot of references to other books that I've read. I, interestingly enough, had just finished a book called Projection of the Astral Body, uh, which is referenced heavily in this book, and they talk about astral projection in here. So that was enjoyable. And there's a lot of Kabbalistic symbolism that... Uh, if you know anything about the Kabbalah, you will pick up on. And if you don't, it's still enjoyable symbolism. Uh, there's a lot of references to the ocean, obviously, but there's also a lot of moon magic, a lot of talk about how the moon influences the world and what the moon is like. Um, you know, there's another book, like I just said, called Moon Magic, which I assume delves into similar themes. But uh, this is about the archetypical female principle in a lot of ways. I've heard it said that the previous book I read of hers, uh, The Goatfoot God, is about the archetypical male principle, and this book is about the archetypical female principle, and it's associated with the sea and with water and with the moon and with all these different natural forces. And uh, Dion Fortune kind of ties them all together as a part of her narrative and sort of the setting of her narrative, and it, it all works together in that way. The book also toys with your expectations a little bit. I mean, the obvious thing is to have Morgan Le Fay and the narrator, who I don't think is ever named in the book, um, get, get together and become a romantic couple. And that's sort of resisted throughout. And that's, you know, what you would expect in a book like this. You would expect it to devolve into kind of a cheap romance. And she really avoids that. She really goes out of her way to tell a different type of story and show that there's different ways that men and women can relate to each other apart from as sexual partners. And I think that's really important and cool. It reminds me of like, you know, when Harry met Sally, when they say that men and women can't be friends or it's always, sex always gets in the way. And this book is sort of showing a different side of that that, you know, you can have a meaningful partnership with a, another person of the opposite sex and it doesn't have to revolve around sex and it doesn't have to revolve around a romantic relationship. And I think that's an important uh, part of the book. And that's, that's something I found interesting about it because, you know, what you expect to happen doesn't happen. It goes in a different direction. But it's through this friendship and through being drawn out of his shell that the narrator is able to kind of develop as a character and, and become find a new way to live. He develops his artistic talents. She encourages him to do paintings and engravings and uh, decorate the walls of this like temple they build on the side of the coast uh, by the cave that they're going to do magic in. And uh, he develops his, as a creative individual and he develops as something more than what he was, which was primarily just a, a worker and a caregiver. And so he learns to like 
unleashes inner talents in that regard. And he learns about magic and he learns about rituals and ritual design and all these great things. Um, so it really is is about, I mean, it's a very similar kind of plot to her other book. It's about uh, development of the individual personality, which I think was a big theme for her and out throughout her writings as a psychiatrist or as a psychologist to uh, kind of help people fulfill their potential and realize their dreams and realize uh, what they're capable of as, as human beings. And so I think that's a common theme running through both of these books. It's a pretty short book. I got through it quickly. This is published by uh, Wiser Publications, who put out a lot of my very favorite books on occultism and a few novels as well. But uh, it's a good quality book. It's quite short. I got through it in, in a very little amount of time. But I really don't have too much more to say about it, honestly. It's a pretty straightforward narrative, but it does have a lot of little tidbits of good occult wisdom and advice in there. And I found it valuable to read. If you're interested in studying these type of uh, sciences, it's certainly worth delving into in addition to her nonfiction works, because I think you'll get a lot out of the, the way that she describes kind of how these natural forces work and how you can tap into them and what they can do for you. So there you have it. Dion Fortune's The Sea Priestess, the female principle contrasted with the male principle in The Goatfoot God. Both uh, very interesting books, not among my very favorite novels I've ever read, but certainly worth reading if you're into these kind of things. And I was glad I read them. And I intend to read more of her books in the future. And I just wanted to tide you guys over with something short while I'm struggling to try to finish my novel. It's going well. I'm ahead of schedule. I'm more than halfway done. Uh, and so, but I have to get back to writing because it's a, it's a daily grind. You got to write every day. And if you don't know about National Novel Writing Month, look at my previous video. I'll link to that here. And you can see uh, all about that. And if you want to write a novel, which you should, you should do it during National Novel Writing Month. It's a little late this year, but come back next year. Oh, and don't forget, before I forget, I've got a new book coming out myself. This book right here behind me, it's coming out on December 1st. It's available for pre-order now. It's called Conform or Be Cast Out, The Literal Demonization of Nonconformists. And it's a story about how society has uh, habitually tried to persecute and demonize those that it finds different and those that don't fit into the boxes that society has drawn around them. And it's a story of that kind of from a uh, metaphysical point of view, because I'm talking about literal demonization where people are cast in the role of a devil worshiper or a demon or a Satanist or something of that nature. Uh, it's very excited to have it come out. It's published by Moon, Moon Books, great little publisher. They've done a good job helping me promote it, and uh, it'll be out on December 1st. So please go pre-order it, and if you have ordered it, I'd appreciate it if you would write a review because the more reviews I get, the more copies I can sell. Thank you so much. i got to get back to writing. I've been your host, Logan Albright, and I'll catch you next time.